The Sound of Freedom, it is crushing it at the box office, all things considered. The amount of money it's made given that it is an indie film and also that it's competing against an indie film. See what I did there? It is pretty incredible, but as you know, there's a political issue that has been made of this film when there really shouldn't be, considering it is about saving children from sex trafficking. But as you know, uh, the media has decided to va take a very divisive stance on this. Welcome back to Words of Paradise. I'm your host, Leon Idol, and we're going to get into an article that dropped today, yesterday by the time you're seeing this, that it might be one of the dumbest takes I've seen on the issue thus far. Let's get into it. Why Sound of Freedom has a 100% Rotten Tomatoes audience score? Sound of Freedom has been a surprise hit at the box office in 2023, and audiences everywhere are loving it, as proved by Rotten Tomatoes score. Now, this is from Screen Rant. If you guys are not aware, you really should be. Screen Rant has a very particular lens to them, a very particular political lean, and it very often is reflected in their articles. So when I saw this, I thought, really? Screen Rant? And they're giving this movie props? What's the catch? I read through this article. You're right. There is absolutely a catch. Don't go sitting here thinking that Screen Rant's changed their ways. They've got some sort of lovey-dovey opinion about this film. It is very much a backhanded compliment of an article, so let's get into it. The 2023 film, Sound of Freedom, has surpassed all expectations at the box office, partly thanks to its rave reviews from audiences. The movie, which stars Jim Caviezel in the lead role, tells the story of Tim Ballard, a man who quit his job as a special agent with the Department of Homeland Security. Now, it should specify, in my opinion, that it's telling the true story. Uh, however, they don't do that. Maybe they assume people are smart enough to catch on to that. If so, thank you for thinking your viewers and your readers are intelligent. I wouldn't make that assumption about Screen Rant readers myself, but hey, I'm glad you have faith in your own people. He was tired of only catching pedophiles and not saving the children depicted in the exploitive content they were consuming. Ballard, with the help of former cartel accountant and Colombian police, set out on a mission to save children from sex trafficking in Colombia. Sound of Freedom's box office numbers are impressive, to say the least, especially given the fact that the movie's competing against the likes of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, Insidious the Red Door, and Transformers Rise of the Beast. That's really not much. I mean, Indiana Jones has been a mega flop, like, without, and everyone knew it was going to be a mega flop, your boy included, and Transformers has been out for weeks now. Insidious, uh, that, that's fair, that has actually been doing pretty good at the box office. It brought in some good money. Its reviews, from what I can tell, have been pretty fair. Um, I don't know if that's really competition for something like The Sound of Freedom. I don't think the demographics would really cross over that much, but I could be wrong. But the demographics is what this article gets into and what this article full-on lies about. The movie, which hails from a small film distribution studio, is standing its ground against sequels and big-budget projects. It even has a 100% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. However, there is a significant reason behind The Sound of Freedom's perfect showing. Sound of Freedom's Rotten Tomato audience score is so high because of the movie's base. Now, who do you think they're going to say the movie's base is? Because let's be honest, this is a movie about child sex trafficking and the prevention of that and how, you know, this is a bad thing. So really, this movie should appeal to everyone. I mean, not necessarily to everybody. You got people like me who cannot handle things that have to do with exploiting children. So I actually won't be seeing this movie, not because I don't think it deserves the support, but because I know that I'm an emotional wuss and just wouldn't be able to handle it, but I appreciate its message. That being said, everyone should be for the message that this movie is really about and, and of of course, they're going to find a way to twist it to where only a particular group of people are interested in the message this movie brings to the table. Sound of Freedom directly appeals to a specific religious demographic. Angel Studios, the distribution studio behind the 2023 film, mainly releases faith-based projects, so the advertising for the movie about Tim Ballard targets the religious crowd. This is absolutely bogus. Saying that just because Angel Studios usually releases faith-based movies, that this is the crowd it is catering towards only religious people, is bananas. You guys remember who kind of headed up Miramax? If I remember right, his name was, oh, what was it? That's right, Harvey Weinstein, the dude who was kind of a fan of raping girls so that they could get movie parts. By saying Angel Studios only uh, their only demographic is religious individuals is like saying Miramax only demographic is for people who support the rape of actresses who want to get parts just because that's what their you know head honcho opted to do and because the studio is now associated with that forevermore maybe just maybe Angel Studios while they do put out a lot of faith based, faith based films are able to just put out movies that they think the general audience will like some faith based some not because just because your studio is faith based does not mean that every film is going to be a faith based film this is not a faith based film from like, like I said again what every sort of reviewer who is honest like Jeremy Johns has to say. I mean, to my knowledge, he's, he's one of the biggest movie reviewers on YouTube, and he flat out said, uh, by the way, he does not use religion in any of his videos that I've seen, and I've been watching the man for years. I have no idea what his re religious affiliation is, if he even has one, and he flat out said, this is not a religious-based movie, even though it's a religious studio. So right there, you're, you're very much lying about the targeted audience, but again, I would really like to draw that Miramax comparison. Are you trying to say that all Miramax films are for people who are pro raping of actresses if all Angel Studios films must be pro-religious individuals. Because that's not, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, Screen Rant, we can go down that rabbit hole.
Both Kvizel and Ballard are very open about their beliefs and QAnon conspiracy theories, and the people whose ideals align with theirs are mainly the ones watching The Sound of Freedom in theaters rating the film on Rotten Tomatoes. Really? Because last I checked, people like The Critical Drinker, who also have, you know, reviewed this film, or once again, Jeremy Johns, uh, they're not QAnon individuals, they're just honest movie reviewers, and... Are you trying to say that they're the ones reviewing this and that it's catering to them because they're QAnon believers? I'm sure Jeremy Johns or the Critical Drinker would love to hear that you think that they are QAnon supporters. Also, let's say they are. Let's say that Tim Ballard and Jim Caviezel are QAnon supporters. Does that really make the message of saving children from child exploitation any worse? Like, like if, if someone walked up to me and said that I believe everyone over 65 years old should just be, should be killed, we should murder them, we need to keep the population down, everyone over the age of 65, we need to euthanize them, but also, I believe the sky is blue, I'd be like, well shit. I don't really agree with their mentality on the old people, but I do have to agree the sky is blue because, well, that is a fact. It is a fact that saving children from sex trafficking is a good thing. Just because you disagree with somebody who has an opinion does not mean that you cannot agree on something else when they are objectively correct about it. And I do not think that anyone would disagree. It is objectively correct to want to save children from sex trafficking. Although Sound of Freedom has undoubtedly been a box office success regarding its budget, it will never reach the same scope as movies such as Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the Super Mario Bros. movie. Uh, no kidding! This is a $14 million indie film. Of course you're not going to compare it to Guardians 3 or the Mario movie. That would be absurd, so I don't even know why you would bring it up, aside from the fact that you were trying to downplay this movie, which, that makes absolutely no sense. Are you going to, like, like compare Disney straight-to-DVD movies to their original predecessors that came out theater? No, you usually give it the caveat, it's a straight-to-DVD Disney film. Are, I, why, why did you even write that? Caviezel's film isn't attracting diverse audiences, really? Real, well, let, let's go to Twitter, let's take a look and see if it's attracting diverse audiences, shall we? So here we've got Copa Catania. Copa Catania is a fantastic movie reviewer on YouTube. He and I have streamed together multiple times. He's a great guy. Drop him a sub. And we've got his thoughts about the sound of uh, about the sound of freedom on Twitter here. I bring you the cuties review and the sound of freedom review from Rolling Stone. I'm guessing there's a few chomos on staff. So yeah, he very much is pointing out the difference between the Rolling Stones article. Thanks to major marketing mistake, the award-winning French movie Cuties was accused of sexualizing young girls. It's actually a sensitive portrait of growing pants and deserves to be seen. Whereas Sound of Freedom, QAnon tinge thriller about child trafficking is designed to appeal to the conscience of conspiracy adult boomer. So, yeah, I, I very much agree with Copa here. Sounds like some chomos on the Rolling Stone staff, but once again, he's not, to my knowledge, a religious individual. Or if he is, he doesn't put it in his videos, he's not put it in any sort of live stream, so if he is religious, he's able to have his opinions and form his opinions outside of those. Once again, subscribe to Copa Catania. He's great. But the point, this is his idea of this movie, his thoughts on this movie, has nothing to do with his religion, if that even exists. I don't even know if he has one. Vex Electronica, another fantastic YouTuber who I've seen multiple times, who I've streamed with. She's incredible. She's a gem. Also subscribe to her. Once again, to my knowledge, not particularly religious. Or if she is, she does not go about preaching about it. She says something similar. Now that I've seen Sound of Freedom, I genuinely don't understand how any media outlet can be against this film. This is only from one hour ago as re recording my video. So yeah, good on you, Vex. I'm glad you enjoyed the film. We got Lofty Pixels here. Lofty Pixels, once again, to my knowledge, no information about his religion. He never really talks about it. Yo, the Sound of Freedom backlash is out of control. What the fuck is this shit? I'm almost ready to see these guys are a bigger threat to children than actual pedophiles. What? It's like an incel nice guy mindset of forcing good acts on someone and demanding to be rewarded for it. I don't even know what that means, but okay. We got Sassafras84, not sure who she is. If you haven't watched Sound of Freedom, you need to. Guys, I just searched Sound of Freedom in the, the, the Twitter search bar here, and this is everything I'm getting. We don't just disappear, so Sound of Freedom, D-Day Cobra, there's no scenario where slamming Sound of Freedom is a good look. I agree, correct? I, I, 100%. The film is not divisive in any way, shape, or form. If you're slamming this movie, you need serious help, protect children. I mean, I do not know who could disagree with a mentality like that. We'll give you a like. Uh, Mike Flynn using QAnon movie to recruit for American ISIS, like, like that is absolutely, yeah, gen General Mike Flynn, so this guy seems to be some sort of politician and is, is against the sound of freedom, when again, it's about protecting children from sex trafficking, that is insane. Here we got an interesting tweet. In 2014, CBS did a segment applauding Sound of Freedom Tim Ballard's work against child sex trafficking. Almost 10 years later, the same media is calling the film inspired by his work paranoid, Cuban conspiracy. Why? So let's see here. Crack let's down, look child. Last weekend, police broke up a major sex trafficking ring in Colombia, which has become a destination for tourists looking for sex with boys and girls. The police had help from Way an American who went undercover to rescue the children. And Elaine Quijano met him. 
Tim Ballard so has real one Tim mission Ballard here. to track down child traffickers. Four months ago, Colombian authorities asked Operation Underground Railroad, a nonprofit group that rescues trafficked kids. Like, After again, that, that that's all in the film. That's literally what the film is to about. Put together a sting. No men will be in here, only women. Operation Underground Railroad spent months planning. Find these kids as they lure them in by pretending to have a modeling agency. They target them at nine or ten years old. And they were telling us that about by 11, they're ready for sex. They're ready to be sold. What is that like? See, th th yeah, th that, is, that is disgusting. Who could support something like that? Obviously, nobody who has any sort of conscience. And yet, here we see, yeah, 10 years ago, they were, they, were, they were calling this man a hero. And now they're calling this film Paranoid QAnon Conspiracies. That is absolutely insane. So the point is, it says it's not attracting diverse audiences, but here from what I can tell, almost everyone that I, you know, shout out, to my knowledge, has no religious affiliation, or at least the content creators don't have any sort of religious affiliation to their videos. They're just moviegoers or YouTubers. So what do you mean it's not attracting diverse audiences? It's attracting people who like going to the movies. Anyway, which would account for differing opinions and likely a lower score on Rotten Tomatoes. So the people that Sound of Freedom was made for are the ones watching it. Oh no, why is that a bad thing? People, movies, first of all, are made for demographics like you're not going to get probably a whole lot of Chinese people going to see something like 12 years a slave it's not really made for that Chinese market you know what I'm saying like like people are like, movies are made for a target demographic now I would hope the target demographic for people who are anti-sex trafficking is a very large demographic but there would be nothing wrong with people the movie is made for going and watching the movie since the movie was tailored for them the audience reviews have been through the roof why Sound of Freedom's Rotten Tomatoes critic score is much lower, but still pretty good. I I'm surprised you put still pretty good. I'll give you a small amount of credit there. On the other hand, Sound of Freedom's critic score on Rotten Tomatoes is much lower than the audience score as of the writing of this article. The rating sits at 77% based on 26 reviews. Of course, a score of 77 is still something to be proud of, but the difference between the audience interpretations of the movie and the critics says a lot about the film. Does it, though? Does it say a lot about the film? Let's take a look at uh, Indiana Jones here. Oh, let's add blocker. Let's just one moment. Oh, look at that! Indiana Jones with the Dial of Destiny got a 69% on the tomato score. And if you click Top Critics, 60 on the tomato score. So are you trying to downplay the sound of freedom with how the critics are, oh, it's only got a 77%, still good, but only a 77 well, It's still objectively better than Indiana Jones if we want to use your logic that Rotten Tomatoes actually matters. What about all audience? Okay, 88%, 80%. I personally don't think it was near this good. This movie was a 20% at best, but you know what? Fair enough. I might be in the minority there. But talking about the critics, first of all, you need to show us a 69% of all critics, which is far lower than Sound of Freedom with its 78%. Now, it does not have an all critics versus top critics, but it does have all audience versus verified audience. Over 5,000 verified members, 99%. All audience, 10,000 ratings, still a 99%. So, this must be a better film than Indiana Jones. I mean, the critics and the audience tend to agree. The critics who gave this movie a rotten score believe it exploited emotions and was propaganda for Ballard's controversial nonprofit, Operation Underground Railroad. Really? A controversial nonprofit? You mean the same one that CBS did a segment applauding 10 years ago, as Melissa Tate so brilliantly points out? Get the hell out of here with your propaganda. That's what this is. This is absolute propaganda from Screen Rant. They don't want you to see this movie. They don't want you to like this movie. They know they have to say some similarities of, of something nice about it to, you know, not look like the Rolling Stones, like, you know, Copa Catania pointed out, not look like child molesters, uh, but yeah, the are being as, like, nice as they have to be without actually admitting that this is a good movie by all accounts, calling it a controversial non-profit, oh yeah, I I'm so sure, it, you know, exploiting the emotions, that's what, movies always exploit emotions, if that's what you want to call it, anytime a movie makes you feel something, it's making you feel something, like, about something that nine times out of ten is fiction, isn't true, did you feel emotion when a rocket wreck Coon died in Guardians of the Galaxy. Did it was that exploiting your emotion or was it just making you feel something like a movie should feel? That's fi this is about a true story. Meanwhile, audiences shared that it was a very important and powerful film. Specifically, many were impressed by the movie's tagline, God's children are not for sale, which is not just the movie's tagline, but if I'm, you know, to be correct, I believe I was told that uh, this is something that, the, that Tim Ballard, the real man, actually did say. So it has nothing to do with the religious context of, like, Angel Studios, but it's actually something that Tim Ballard himself quoted. So if, that's just a, it's a very powerful sentence. It makes a good tagline for a movie. Um, as predicted, the average Sound of Freedom uh, viewer belongs 
to the religious crowd. But again, you're, you're wrong. I just went through and saw several individuals. In fact, let's go look at some reviews and see how many people are actually religious. All right, we got a five-star review here. It will definitely hit you in the heart. This raw masterpiece, not like all the other lame-ass movies. This is the real deal. Go watch it. Very emotional, suspenseful, real life. Gives you education on what's going on in the world. I think twice before watching it a second time, not because it's bad or anything, but because I don't know if I'll be strong enough to handle watching it. Gut-wrenching scenes again. Recommend it to your friends, family, everyone. So nothing about faith in that one. Uh, a must-watch. Everything was great. Must-watch despite what some people tell you. Powerful, moving, and really well-filmed. Music and cin cinematography were done in the highest quality. All right, not nothing religious about that. Uh, this movie, everyone should go watch at least once. If you don't think you can afford it, go to angel.com, freedom to see about free tickets while it's in theater. Um, not, not entirely sure. GF wanted to see it, didn't realize it's associated with QAnon idiots, one star. It wasn't, but you know, what, whatever. Uh, very thought-provoking and very well done. Saw it twice. So yeah, well, we've had one bad review so far, by the way, and again, it has to do with that same QAnon stuff, which, which makes me wonder if, if they did see it, did they really, like, go in with the intention to give it? Is this a good faith review? Because they don't say anything about the review itself, as opposed to this says, you know, thought-provoking, very well done, saw it twice. Again, no religious context. The movie is a very harsh vision of what's happening in our world today, human trafficking of young children, kudos to those involved in making this movie. Really, it doesn't seem like a lot of people are talking about the, the faith aspect that you say this demographic is for. Uh, let's, let's, let's see how long it takes to find one. Great film. I like this movie because the story was told without being so graphic, did not sensationalize terrible, okay, nope. Best movie watched this year, like between the knowledge, very intense. Movies traveling, okay, absolutely great movie. So glad it's st still nothing uh, very religious in any of these reviews. And, you know, I'm not even going to go to the next page. We had the entire first page of reviews here. One negative review, none of them saying anything about faith. So so tell us again. Tell us again how it has a very, how it belongs to a religious crowd. You are making that up just based on the studio's name. Like I said, guys, I'm not even going to see this movie because I know I, for one, won't be able to handle what happens in this movie. I do not like seeing things happen to kids. It's just not something that, especially at least if it's based on a true story. Now, it's happening in some sort of fictional movie or whatnot. Whatever. It, it, it's fine. I, I can take that because it's fiction. It's not real. But this is based on a true story. And even if it makes it less graphic... I'm just not man enough to handle that sort of thing, but I do support this film, and I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't support this film, again, aside from purely playing politics, but this article was an outright lie that we were able to effectively disprove at every turn, whether they want to talk about how it is, you know, only religious people going to see this, despite both Twitter and Rotten Tomatoes showing that that's not the case, whether they're talking about how Angel Studios only make stuff directed at Christians, which again, if you want to use that sort of logic, let's do the same thing for Miramax, uh, it makes no sense to me why they would go out of their way to write an article that uses obvious lies that talks about how it's never going to match up to something like, you know, the Super Mario Bros. movie when of course it's not going to. That's just a very unfair comparison, so why even write it down? This is what the media is trying to do. This is what these sort of news outlets are trying to do. They're trying to take the normal, average, everyday person who's not plugged into the internet like we are, who does not care about what's going on in the world, whether it be from a pop culture nerdy standpoint or from a very political standpoint or from just the normal, everyday standpoint of don't let you know adults traffic and fuck children. Uh, they're trying to exploit people and going and keeping them from seeing this movie because, oh no, some people who are right-wingers made it, if, if that's even the case. So, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below, or let me know on Twitter. You can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Not always about Hollywood movies or movies like this, which uh, seem to be the antithesis of Hollywood, but also Magic the Gathering, anime, video games, you name it. It's all here in the Nerdosphere. And this has been Words of Paradise.